<clears throat> Greetings, Saintsmen. We're going to be discussing the tangent ratio today, and actually we're going to go through all of the basic trigonometric functions. Make sure today that you have with you your scientific calculator. scientific, excuse me, or graphing calculator. There are three buttons that you're going to be looking for on the this calculator. You're going to be looking for, um, it says T-A-N, S-I-N, and C-O-S. And these have uh, specific uh, functions to them. Um, this one, and we're going to not just call this guy tan. It drives me nuts. The, the same way people say sin or they say cos because they're lazy. Tan, T-A-N, is actually short for this word. It's the tangent. It's referring to a trigonometric ratio that we have within a triangle. So what we had figured out is that there are certain proportions that exist for, vari for various... This is... I'm having the hardest time getting the right triangle here. That's not crooked. Come on. There we go. One more time. All right. That's going to be good enough. Um... <clears throat> We had uh, certain trigonometric ratios that were happening. Like for example, that when we had the 45-45-90 triangle, right, just as review, with the 45-45-90, the ratio from always from the side, there are the two legs, which are always the same, to the hypotenuse was rad 2, right? And this has to do with when we get into this instance of uh, right triangles, right? So for all of them, no matter what my, my leg length is, I just multiply by rad 2, and I'm going to wind up getting that hypotenuse. And vice versa, if I want to go from the leg to the hypotenuse to the leg, I divide by rad 2. And then we dealt with the 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? Okay. In the 30, 60, 90, we had a side leg, right, which would have been the short leg, which was x. And the way that we solve for the other two, proportionally, no matter what, Always in a 30, 60, 90 was that we would have 2x and then we would, I'm sorry, we'd have 2x and then we'd have x rad 3, okay? That was actually something people would mix up on these problems, right? Which was which? The hypotenuse and the long leg. And of course, you have to think about this rationally as well. What's going to be the longest side, right? And it's going to always be the hypotenuse. Okay, just in case you, you get mixed up which one is going to go where, just consider this. This has to be the longest side. Well, what is, which is going to yield a bigger number if you're going to multiply by 2 or if you're going to multiply it by rad 3? Now, rad 3, if you punch it into your calculator, right, you're going to, you can actually get a decimal approximation. It's going to be about 1.7. So it's going to be less than 2, obviously. So it has to be proportionally shorter than that hypotenuse and it has to be that long leg. So just another way to consider this. So something that's been done is that no matter what we have here, we can say proportionally, we can assign various lengths to the sides opposite in this right triangle. So what we're effectively trying to account for is how these legs here and here adjust correspondingly to um, the right triangle, right? So for example, we can actually continue to do some division. We can actually divide this guy by two, right? We can actually figure out um, how to get the, uh, the, the proportions for a, uh, a, a 15 degree angle, right? Or we could even divide this guy by two, right? Or uh, not by two, but this guy by two, right? And we're gonna change that then rather than being a 45, 45, 90, um, we're going to have a 67.5 and a 22.5, right? Um, we can actually continue to kind of do some of this work and, and figure out these varying lengths. And so what's been discovered is the following. We're going to take this triangle, and this guy is named A, B, C. In triangle A, B, C, we're going to discuss the tangent ratio. The tangent ratio, or the tangent of angle A, is going to be from the angle A. It will be the side opposite over the side adjacent. Okay, so the side opposite here is BC. This is our opposite. 
remember, we've been discussing in this terminology, actually since really the beginning of the course, but we've really been bringing it up recently. We have an angle, side opposite, would have this relationship. Now, I have to consider what is, or who is adjacent living to you, right? The adjacent house is the neighboring house or neighboring apartment, right? So this guy right here is what's adjacent. Do not worry about this side right here, okay? That is your hypotenuse, okay? He's not going to be relevant for tangent. How do we figure out where he is? Well, remember, hypotenuse is always going to be opposite the right angle. So the tangent of A is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, or more simply put, it's going to be BC over AC. Okay? So let's find tangent. <clears throat> It's only going to apply here for our right triangle, okay? So here's some side lengths. We have 40, we have 24, and we have 32. And we are given a J, L, and K. <clears throat> and we're going to find the tangent of K and find the tangent of J. Okay, so it worked like this. From the angle, tangent of K. The tangent of K is equal to the opposite, 32, over the adjacent, 24. When we find the tangent of J, you're going to see something that's kind of interesting here. So from J, here, the opposite is 24, and the adjacent this time is 32. So. Remember that relationship that we had established with the two acute angles in a right triangle. We had a corollary that those two angles were going to be complementary, right? So they're going to have a sum of 90. The funny thing is, is that when we take their tangents, it's literally just the reciprocal of one another, okay? You're going to do some calculator work today. But I'm going to look for two answers. They will both be mandatory for me, okay? this. We're going to solve for x. Now, before, oops, one more piece of information we need here. We need this the right triangle. Now, before what we would do is that we wouldn't have enough information to solve this problem, right? We could solve for this angle, right? Because it's going <clears> to <throat> be the third angle needed, 90 plus 25. Interior angle sum of a triangle is 180, right? We can back that out and get it 65 degrees. But here's our issue. We can't use the Pythagorean theorem here, right? Because we'd have to do a squared plus b squared is c squared. <clears throat> and we have two unknowns because we don't know what our hypotenuse is. But what we're given to work with here is we have a single angle. We also have an adjacent, or excuse me, an opposite. And we have one of the legs. That's enough information to solve this. This is how it would work. If we find the tangent of 25 degrees, okay, tangent of 25 degrees. And you can leave it just as that, just write tan 25. That's going to be equal to the opposite, 12, over the adjacent, x. Now, gentlemen, this is such a critical part here, tangent of 25. This guy right here, I want you to make this note, tan 25 does not mean tangent times 25. Or that dot maybe isn't explicit enough. Okay, that's this does kind of whatever it does mean. Guys, I'm really slipping today. Does not mean. Does not mean that because I don't even know what that is. Right, no idea what that would be. So, gentlemen, it works like this. Go into your calculator. 
okay? In your calculator, you're gonna punch in the tangent of 25. So you're gonna punch in tan and 25, okay? You're gonna see that you're gonna get a decimal number, all right? Now, you have to be careful here. Because you, as we're doing this, some of you are getting different answers. I've got a class of you guys. Some of you are getting negative 0.1335. Some of you are getting 0.4663. And we will go to four decimal places. If you are getting the negative number, you're doing this incorrectly. And it's not your fault. The problem has everything to do with what mode your calculator is in. So what you need to do is you're looking for um, the mode function of your calculator. And it needs to be in degrees, not radians. Radians are a whole different unit of measure. We're going to be working in, rate in, uh, in degrees. So for some of you guys, you're going to press the mode button. Uh, if you have a Texas Instruments TI-83, which is what I have, or TI-83 and above, that mode button's in the top left corner. You're going to go to the third line down and then make sure that it is on degrees. And you'll be okay. Make sure you, again, test tangent at 25. You should get 0.4663. Now, that is a, remember, this is going to be a rounded answer. And we don't even, haven't even solved for x yet. So this guy right here, this is just some decimal number. If we want to get this guy by itself we, to, to solve for x, we're going to need to multiply by x on both sides, okay? Leaving us now with x times the tangent of 25, which is equal to, and these guys are going to factor out 12. To get x by itself, we're going to divide by the tangent of 25 on both sides. It's going to factor out on the right, on the left, excuse me. x is by itself, and then on the right I have 12 divided by the tangent of 25. And this is your answer. That is the exact answer the same way that rad 3 is an exact answer. And I like rad 3. It's precise. However, you also need to, going to need to give me an approximation. So I need two answers. You're going to have to give me x is equal to what it's equal to. I also need what it's about equal to. So you're going to go in, once you're at this step, once you have, have a the isolated x, and you're going to divide 12 by the tangent of 25 in your calculator. The results you will get is about 25.7, and that's what I'm going to take right there. So when we give a rounded uh, side, we're going to say sides will be to the nearest tenth. angles to the nearest degree okay and then the approximated trigon trigonometric function like tangent to four decimal places Okay. So, next. <clears throat> we can do lesson 9.5, which is sine and cosine ratios. All right. So, moving on, before we kind of get going further, the top of this lesson, I want us to write down the following. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A -A. Math teachers, geometry teachers, trig teachers, for decades and decades 
have used this mantra, Soka Toa. Soka Toa, Soka Toa, Soka Toa. We have to say it to ourselves over and over and over again. You maybe have even heard somebody say that, had no idea what they were referring to. You thought it was some sort of like a, like a chant, some sort of a, you know, I, I, I don't know, some, some multisyllabic chant. Um, some spiritual thing. Uh, it, it, it's maybe deeply spiritual to some of us, like mathematicians, but um, it's, it, it's really actually just the trigonometric functions, okay? What this guy means is we already know tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, think about what we were just discussing with the parts of a right triangle. For S-O-H, we have the sign, which is S-I-N-E, not sin. I know we're at a Catholic school, but I am not the department with, for which you take your sins. You guys can go to the monastery and discuss your sins. I will discuss sign with you, okay? <clears throat> sign is when we take the opposite side, that's what the O stands for, and we're going to divide it by, guess what? The hypotenuse is the only other side that we had in a right triangle. And last but not least, we have the cosine, which is equal to the adjacent, divided by, wild guess, the hypotenuse. All right? Okay, so... <clears throat> Here's a triangle, okay? We are going to find the sine of R, sine of S, the cosine of R, and the cosine of S. Okay. So, first one, let's go with sine of R. So from R, S-I-N of R. From R, we're gonna take the opposite. The opposite of R is gonna be side that's 36 over the hypotenuse, which is 39. So it's going to be 36 over 39. Gentlemen, that is your answer. Next, we're going to take the sine of S. Okay, and we're going to know some stuff about the relationships that we have here. The sine of S. Opposite S is 15. So it's going to be 15 over the hypotenuse, oops, hypotenuse, which is 39 again. We now need the cosine of R. So let's go back to R. The adjacent side to R, the next door neighbor, is 15. Okay. Now this is where students get confused and I'm like, wait, hold on, why isn't 39 the adjacent side? Isn't that isn't that next to R as well, guys? You know why, right? 39 is already the hypotenuse. Okay. It it only has that. It can't it can't be conflicting. It can't be both. Okay. It's opposite the right angle. It's locked in as the hypotenuse meaning that 15 is the only side that could be our, um, our adjacent side. And then, of course, last but not least, the cosine of S is going to be uh, 36 over 39, right? Adjacent to S is going to be 36. Now, I think you guys see it, right? Kind of like I've worked with tangent. Look, our sine of R and our cosine of S are the same thing. Same thing as our, cosine of S, our sine of S and our cosine of R are also the same thing. And that's the way that it's meant to be, okay? Show you something real quick, it's pretty interesting, is that if we take this, okay, just uh, as a, like a little side note here, if I take the sine of R, which is 36 over 39, okay, and when that's punched into a calculator, 
that's going to give us um, the following number. It's going to be 0.9231, okay, rounded. Remember what I said in the previous lesson going back. Um, when we do this, we're going to go and take the approximated trig function to four decimal places, okay? So that's going to be, uh, that's actually effectively what we're doing here. Now we have this approximated trig function, okay? What we want to know is what degree is this, okay? So what we have here is the sine of r is 0.9231, or it's about equal to that, all right? If I want to get r by itself, I have to undo sine, okay? And in your calculator, the second function under SIN is the inverse sine. So the way that I get rid of sine, people are like, oh yeah, you divide by sine right here. I don't know what that means, all right? You can't, you can't just do that to like throw it away. The way you undo sine, because it's its own function, is we're going to take the inverse sine, okay? So we're going to take the inverse sine of the sine of r. And we're going to take the inverse sine, whatever we do, we have to do it to both sides. Okay? You take the inverse sine of sine and we're left with r. If you punch this in, first of all, this um, is an approximation anyway, and the inverse sine is going to be 67 degrees. Okay, so we can back that out to figure out what we have here. Let's do more. Let's say that I have the sine of 36. We're going to write the sine of 36 in terms of cosine. Okay. How do we do that? Well, it's the following. Remember, go back. Remember that the sine of one angle was the cosine of the other. Okay. So if I take the sine here and the cosine here, both of the same angle, all right, it's going to be within the right triangle, the complement. So what's the complement to 36? 90 minus 36 is 54. So here, that's my cosine. It's the cosine of 54. Okay, that's your answer. If you, that was tricky for you, again, if you were asked what the sine of 30 is, okay, it's going to be equal to the cosine of 60. Okay. Solve more triangles. Right triangle at a 35 degree angle here. I have a 53 length hypotenuse, and I have x and I have y, and I'm going to solve for both. Okay. So let's start with 35. What's opposite 35? Okay. And that's the Y. Now, if this is, I'm solving for Y, this guy's opposite, right? We have to say, well, what uses opposite? And we know the hypotenuse. That's what we're left with. Opposite and hypotenuse. Well, of course, if we go back to the top, so katoa, this was so, sine. So we're going to say that the sine of 35 is equal to the opposite y over 53. Let's solve for y, okay? So I'm going to multiply both sides by 53, okay? And I'm going to have 53 times the sine 
of 35 is y. Gentlemen, that is your exact answer. Punch that into your calculator. As long as you are in degrees and not radians, it will give you a decimal, which it's going to be 39.3 or 30.3 degrees. And it's not equal to y, like I wrote. It's about equal to y. Okay. Let's now solve for x. Well, think about what we have here. From the angle, 35, I have my adjacent, and I have the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse. So, ka, toa, that's ka, the cosine. So, it's the cosine from the angle, 35, is equal to the adjacent side, x over 53. Quick to solve, right? Multiply both sides by 53. 53 is going to factor out on the right. On the left, I'm stuck with 53 times the cosine of 35, and that is x. That is my answer. Once I punch that into the calculator, it's going to give me an answer Fifty-three times the cosine. X is about equal to forty-three point four. Sorry, did I write degrees over there? My apologies. I don't know why I would measure a side in, in degrees. I'm really struggling here on Monday morning, guys. Um, this guy's going to be about equal to X. It's like looking at that, I was like, what am I doing there? It's not a degree. Be careful with that. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to do a problem that's called an angle of depression problem. Okay. And elevation and depression um, effectively work the same way here. Um, so it works like this. If we're going to take um, this building here, I'm going to draw a really fancy one, right? It's got some windows, and it's got a door, okay? And then here we are, and we're hitting the main streets. Here's you. I can tell by how many mu how much muscles it has, or how many huge muscles it has, right, on the stick figure. Clearly one of you saints men. Um, and what we're going to figure out is this. You guys notice here we have a right triangle. Okay. And what we can measure here is the following. We can measure the ground, which we're going to say is 40 feet away. The other thing that you know is that this angle of elevation which you can figure out from the shadow of the sun, right? So all you can use is a, a simple protractor and you can measure um, what that is, okay? Um, guys, protractor, there's also another thing, they call them a T-square, the funny thing, or, or they call it a, a square um, in carpentry. I think the hilarious thing about squares are they're actually, they are actually triangles. I remember a guy told me, can you hand me, hand me the square? And he was referring to, and I think some of you guys understand what I'm looking for. Um, that was kind of a funny thing. Um, this angle right here is uh, 40 degrees. I'm sorry. Let's actually change that. This guy's 42 degrees. What we want to know is two things. We want to know how tall is this building, right? Second thing we want to know is because we're interested in things like being superheroes, um, like like some Batman stuff, like if we wanted to be Batman and have some sort of a really awesome... Um, like like uh, like line here, like a steel cable, so we could we could use it for um, like uh, I don't know gliding from the top of the building down because that sounds like fun. Um, how long of steel cable would we need? Okay, 
because these are the sort of thoughts that we have through the day. So um, from the guy, right, from you, from the angle, we need to solve for x. So think about what are we going to use? Are we going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? So what parts do we have? We have the opposite, that's what we're looking for. And then we have the adjacent, OK? We have opposite, and we have adjacent. So ka toa, oa, toa, t, tangent. So we're going to find from the tangent of 42, we're going to say is x over 40. We're going to solve for x, right? Multiply both sides by 40. I think you guys are getting quick at this problem by now. So we know 40 times the tangent of 42 is equal to x. Okay, and it's kind of a smart aleck answer. It's the precise answer, but we are going to also want an approximation. So when you do these problems, um, you will, are required to give you two things here. So I'm going to punch into my calculator 40, 40 times the tangent of 42. Okay. And it gets me 36. It's about 36 feet. Okay. Now, two things. I want to show you guys something. This is why the approximation, because we don't want to deal with the approximation of an approximation. Okay. Because um, that's that's problematic. Okay. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before, but um, it, it's an exercise. Uh, rather than doing your math homework, if you guys want to procrastinate a little bit, um, take a paragraph. Um, you just cut and paste. In fact, uh, you can just Google the Declaration of Independence. Um, the pre, uh, the, 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 like, like, like the whole Declaration of Independence, um, uh, or, or actually more, more famous, the preamble to the Constitution. You can copy that guy and put it into Google Translate, but go through a few different languages. Go from English to Spanish, Spanish to Japanese, Japanese to French, and then French back to English. The results are really fun. Um, it's going to kind of resemble what we had before, but it's not really, you know, the same thing. That's why we want to get away from approximations of approximations. It just doesn't, doesn't really translate well. Here's what I mean. We think X is about equal to, and this guy is really like 36.016, okay? If we say, and just say, okay, well, X is equal to 36, okay? And it's not. It's approximately that. But if we say, okay, well, we can now use sine. We could say the sine of 42 is equal to the opposite 36 over the adjacent, which is y, okay? And then when we solve for y, okay, we're gonna multiply both sides by y, and we have to divide then. By sine of 42. Okay, and then what we're going to get is that our approximation is uh, 36 divided by uh, the sine of 42. I'm going to punch it into my calculator right now, and it gives me 53.801. Okay, here's the issue that's one answer. The other way, though, is that if we actually just used this, okay, and said, well, the cosine, right, of 42 is equal to the adjacent 40 over the hypotenuse y. We're solving now, okay, we're going to multiply both sides by y. And we're going to get um, that, we're going to divide uh, by cosine of 42. And we're going to have y is equal to 40 over the cosine of 42. Watch what's going to happen here. When we punch that into our calculator, we're going to get a different answer. It's going to be slightly different. And that's going to mean something, right? We're going to get 53.801. Okay, it's 53 both ways, but which answer is going to be better, do you think? I think we agree, right? Because when we used this right here, 
Um, it wasn't the sine of 42 that was the issue. It was the x. It was 36. It was an approximation, right? It yielded a slightly different answer. But again, gentlemen, I, I've kind of uh, made the joke in class. This is what makes space travel a little bit dicey, right? Um, and trigonometry, if you can imagine, is used all over the place when we're trying to be exact uh, with, with trajectories and, and, and elevations and so forth. Yeah, rocket scientists are interested with this, okay? Um, it's, it, it's problematic if you're trying to get a specific angle of reentry and you're off by uh, two, ten, two hundredths, right? That, that can mean uh, you know, life and death for somebody who's uh, designing a spacecraft that's reentering. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really means something. So um, it, it's, it's a close enough answer. It's one of those that gets the best we can, can do if it's the only option we had. If this is the way that we had to do the problem, that's the, I mean, that's just what we do, but, but this is a much clearly a better answer because that gives us uh, a better um, and a more precise exact answer before we actually do our approximation, okay? So just thought I'd point this guy out. Your homework is being posted onto Canvas. If you have any questions, please reach out. Good luck.